when you see the movement of the military across this country, let me make this clear, you guys, everyone listening to this on radio and everyone listening around the world, these people don't play for broke. They play for keeps, okay? The idea that somehow you're just going to sit in your living room in your lazy boy or uh, I have another name I won't say on the radio for those chairs, you know, the, the point being is, is that we're already being told that the end of freedom of speech is nigh at hand. We're already being told that if you call a murderer a murderer, that you can be imprisoned as and the guy that did the murder goes free. Uh, can I tell you what I've been told, and I think that most people who live in the world of reality will back this up? When you have a preponderance of individuals in federal penitentiaries, if they happen to be, you know, uh, blacks, they get recruited by black Muslims, okay? This isn't a black statement. There are white Muslims, too. There are uh, Latino Muslims. But the point is, is that all of these stories that we used to hear about warehouses full of guns, you know, people said that would never happen. What would never happen is the fact that what happens when all those, and I think it's a million seven hundred fifty thousand. If somebody's with the Bureau of Prisons wants to correct me, I'm just going by you know my memory. The, the point being, let's say close to two million people who fit that category, they get released. They're let's say taken and bands to warehouses, armed, and say, you know, you are now the army of Allah. Go get them. Would you think that would have been believable had you not seen the thousands of career criminals released out of federal prison? No, I wouldn't have, and I wouldn't have believed it just a couple of years ago. But when I, I'll tell you what really caused the worm to turn for me was when Loretta Lynch made a public announcement in the aftermath of the San Bernardino massacre by a member of ISIS, and she didn't express sympathy towards the families. She said, you know, if you use the term Muslim extremist, we're coming after you. That, that's when it became real for me. Well, and that's been stated, according to World Net Daily, in the Idaho situation. Uh, where, um, um, a man sent me the dream his little son had, and then somebody put the U.N. vehicles up on Drudge or something, yes. and the little boy said, Daddy, Daddy, that's who I saw in our driveway. Those are the things I saw with the evil men coming to get us. I got that email, too. Okay, so you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not making it up. You know, the thing is, is that that here's the thing: out of the mouth of babes, God has ordained praise. The Bible talks about that the children who come, uh, the children, and a child shall lead them. You know, the interesting thing is, just as as the there's a generation that uh, grew up that knew not Joseph, and obviously persecuted the Jews in Egypt. Well, they were Hebrews at that point, but the deal is, is that now. Now there's a whole generation of people that, you know, they think that they, they've got to have a sandbox in the local um, <laughs> corner of the university that's a safe zone. And I'm on record as saying, I think, seriously, I think they should be given adult diapers. I think they should be given Prozac dip binkies, okay? I think they should be given uh, uh, pillows and let them fight each other up and then serve them uh, chocolate ice cream, you know what I'm saying? And and let them sit in their dirty diapers, sucking their Prozac binky as the world uh, gets ready to do away with them. Because guess what? You know, if they want to play in a sandbox, cats play in a sandbox. Little children do, too, but they grow up. Evidently, now the idea is to put all of uh, uh, the collegiate uh, liberals into sandboxes and to safe zones. Good night. They better not get in the car. They never get on an airplane, they shouldn't open the door. Maybe the, for their sake they should quit breathing. Because, again, we're in such a nightmare situation. And I, I just absolutely want, want people to get it. And, and, look, it's like food, okay? We're in the drought. I was, you know, astonished to see Phoenix, I think, hit 121, Vegas hit 117. But some of these records were broken. It's one thing to be in Death Valley and hit 120 or 121. It's another thing when you're right at the point of uh, inception where if people can't put two and two together, the biggest issue is drought equals famine, famine equals disease, disease equals death. <laughs> you can 
still buy food. Yeah, but it's filled with glyphosate, and it's also uh, genetically altered, and also you're turning into a mutant. So laugh what you can with the human voice, because pretty soon that will be taken away from you. Or high fructose corn sugar, or corn syrup. You know, here's the deal. We've been genetically altered by the water we drink. Did you ever think, Dave, that the pharmaceutical companies knew exactly what they were doing when they created birth control pills and all of the uh, urine that went into the public water systems would have the chemical emasculation effect that it's had on the American males over all these years? Actually, yeah, decades? To answer your question, short answer for me, yes. And when I wrote about it and I called it Toilet to Tap, uh, no one wanted to listen. Yeah, no one wanted to listen, Steve, when I wrote it. I probably need to break that out and rerun that because there's so much more scientific evidence now. But I was scorned when I wrote that article, despite having documentation. Well, again, and not only that, it gets worse, okay? 25 years ago, I talked about excretive pharmaceuticals. It wasn't just the xenoestrogens or the estrogen compounds. It was everything. I mean, you got basically, you got a sewer mixing bowl, and even though you can take out the coli and water and you can take out different uh, pathogens, you still can't get rid of that. So the mullahs come on the scene, and they start making statements like, this America has lost its fertility rate that's absolutely correct yeah. basically mocking the sperm count you know it's interesting how I'll make a statement uh, the sperm count went down in America as the illiteracy rate rose dramatically the masculinity come on do you really think ROTC military guys need red high heels or I don't know what they're called but an apron that makes you sympathize with a pregnant woman do you really think that uh, that women are meant to be in the trenches now it's different if you're uh, you know fighting for your life and stuff but what's happened the morale of the military has been so compromised you can't believe well forgive me you can believe the average person listening to this cannot believe some of the psychological duress that our fighting men are under you know they're being lectured more on how to uh, get along with uh, uh, the 31 flavors of now uh, defying human beings. It used to be male and female. That was pretty easy. And I said, I don't even want to go with the 31 version, you know. Number one, I'm too non-sequential. But here's the gist of it. Confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Then who is? The devil. You know, you can demoralize, and here's the thing. All warfare is based on a, if you will, an implied morality, the implied right to fight for your values, your language, your culture. The only guy I see that's really out there fighting for his borders, language, and culture is Vladimir Putin. And I, I'll get emails saying, you're a sympathizer. No, I'm yeah. telling you the truth. If Putin tells the truth, I'm I'm going to stand by his statement. He's telling the truth. If your government wants to take your guns away, which they do, isn't it interesting? Not one jihad training camp has ever been raided or any guns taken away. i, I got to tell you, now we've got stabbings and chaos in, in, in uh, California, I think Sacramento or someplace. They're calling it a Nazi mega rally. Notice how the Nazis themselves will blame the Nazis yet they're behind the scenes paying off everybody, okay? So so where does that leave us tonight? First of all, Brexit. Let me just capsulate this. Brexit was an inside deal. We got, we got eyewitnesses that uh, the light stayed on in the city of London way into the night and into the early morning. The city of London is a separate entity. It's like the Vatican and Rome. It's not under the British government. People were trading and making $100 billion bets. They did a really good job of keeping that news out of the market. Most everybody didn't believe that the Brits would exit from the Brexit. The reason why it was allowed, Dave, is so that the gleaning in the foreign, foreign currency markets could be maximized. you follow me? You read of guys making 200, 300, 400 million bucks on, on what it results to, what, four hours, eight hours of trades? 
pretty good wages. Oh, except one thing. It came at the pillage and plunder of their countrymen and taking their country under. What most people have got to understand about anybody that's in favor of the Trans-Pacific Partnership is they're traitors. What most people have to understand about those in favor of gun control, that they're your executioners. And by the way, all the ones that have sat in on the, you know, love fest on the floor of Congress the other day, you know, all the Democrats, guess what? They all have carry permits. They all have weapons. Or as uh, some of them said, who was a guy, Wrangle? Only us people need to have guns. The other people have the police. Well, I guess the police aren't good enough for them, but they are good enough for guns. It's insanity. It's total tragedy. It is, it is the self-destruct mechanism. And, and I know you probably wondered this, Dave. People don't just get taken by surprise. Even God uh, said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Do you think you and I would be invited to, well, you just got to love yourself more. You just got to realize your best life is now. You just got to realize that we just to have a group hug or like the Attorney General, love will conquer all. Well, it didn't work on the Nazis. By the way, Attila Hun didn't practice it. Genghis Khan didn't practice it. Kublai Khan and some of the dynasties in China that killed 30 to 40 million people. Most people aren't familiar with that history. Or, or, or the wars that have taken place in ancient history. A lot of people died. So the group hug never worked in history, you know? Well, I'm going to love you to pieces. Well, yeah, unfortunately, you're going to be hacked into pieces and probably sold in the meat markets or whatever uh, right. army is hungry enough to sell human flesh. You know, I used to make statements like that. I was called an extremist, okay? I was called a fear monger. I was called a fear porn uh, purveyor. Blah, 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 blah. Until the meat of Christians started showing up in Syria. And two little children, four-year-old girls with their heart ripped out. Oh, I don't want to hear that. You're bloody quail. You're so bloody. And you're so bloody stupid, okay? People who live in the world of denial and absolutely will do anything and everything to attack anybody who says, hey, this is really going on. If the, if the blind lead the blind, Jesus said, they both fall. But it's tough to basically say, read the handwriting on the wall when people put their hand up like horse blinders and start singing to themselves. Have you ever had, Dave, anybody do that? Talk to somebody, say, well, Mr. Hodges, what do you think? And you start to talk, and they put their fingers in their ears and start to sing? And well, run from not you? that. I've had them turn to the side, hold their hand out uh, from get, letting me get too close, supposedly. And just say, oh, that's right, I forgot, you're one of those conspiracy theorists. Yeah, I've had that happen. Well, yeah, when they run, though, from you, that's a pretty good sign, okay? 